So I have gathered a list of very useful VS Code extensions and in this video I'm going to share them with you. So these are the ones that I personally use and first on the list we have the auto rename tag. This one works so that if I start a HTML tag, for example div, while I am editing the first tag it will also edit the closing tag if I wanted to edit the div to say an article or, or something else. Then we have auto doc string which is a python doc string generator and it just does what it says on the tin. Then we have bootstrap 4. This gives me the documentation for bootstrap. As you can see if I scroll down I'll have all of the classes for bootstrap and it will give me the autocomplete as well so it's very useful. Then we have my c sharp extension. This is for syntax highlighting, IntelliSense and definitions so it can be very useful. Next I have class name completion in CSS so it will so it will automatically recognize the HTML classes that I have in my HTML file and then it will autocomplete the classes. Then we have code runner this can just run my code in all of different languages for example C, C++, Java, JS, PHP. And then we have code spell checker so it's just a spell checker for code and then we have the color highlight so it can highlight the web colors in my editor and then we have the css auto prefix so say i'm writing a transition property it will know to always use the webkit or the moz or the o transform for different browsers so that's pretty useful then we have the editor config for vs code honestly i'm not even sure what this one does so it's probably not that important <laughs> Then we have the ERB formatter. This one is very useful and I like to use it a lot. Basically what it does is it formats my ERB files so that when I press save, it will format it and it will look nice and I'll be able to read it. So I'll give you an example. If I come to, I'll uh, just click on GitHub, Instaclone, and then I'll just go to like, for example, as you can see, this page is nice and formatted, but if I put something out of place and then I save it, it will go back to the right place. As you can see, it did. Okay, so let's go back to the extensions. So we are on ERB formatter. Next, I have another ERB formatter, which is also useful because for some reason I need both of them. And then we have ES6 string HTML, which is syntax highlighting. And then we have GitHub Copilot, which can be useful sometimes when I don't know the correct syntax of something. And then we have Git Lens. This one is actually very useful because it will tell you the history of Git pushes. So if I go to comments controller, then I can see whenever I push this and it says you four days ago, you push this. And then it also shows the commit message. So that's very, very nice. Um, then we have HTML to CSS auto completion, IntelliCode, which is AI assisted development. And then that one, then we have IntelliSense for CSS class names and HTML. That's just kind of the same thing as we, the one we had before. Then we have iSort, which is import organization. So if, which honestly, I'm not that sure what it is, but it's an import organization support for Python files using iSort. Then we have the JavaScript ES6 code snippets. So the, that'll give me code snippets from JavaScript ES6 for JavaScript ES6. Then we have Jinja. I didn't even know I had this many extensions. But then we have Jupyter. And then a few more unimportant Jupyter extensions. But then we have Live Server, which is a really useful tool that will make me open a HTML file with a live server so that when I save the HTML file, the browser automatically refreshes, which is pretty useful. And then we have the material icons theme. So you can see I have custom icons on, on my Ruby files and this is because of this. Then we now have, then we have Prettier, the other code form, formatter. And then we have Pylance, which is a performant feature rich language server for Python and VS Code. Python itself, Python environment manager, Python extension pack, Python indent, and then Rails edit credentials, which can be useful to edit Rails credentials because sometimes we'll need to open the Rails encrypted files. Then we have the Ruby extension, which will give us language support and debugging. debugging. Then we have the Ruby on Rails, which gives us 10k plus snippets and daily updates, apparently. This one is actually very useful and I recommend you it. But then we have Ruby RuboCop, which can format uh, code for us, as well as some other things. Oh yeah, and then we have Rufo, which is another Ruby formatter. Then we have subtle match brackets to make sure that I always have the double brackets. And then we have tab 9 AI, which is basically GitHub Copilot, but for free. A template string converter, which converts a string to a template string when typed. Then we have the terminal. I use this extension a lot, but I don't use it in tutorials because you can't really see it. And then we have to-do highlighting, training spaces, Unity code snippets from when I used to use Unity, Unity tools, VS Color Picker, I actually use this quite a bit, then VS Code Ruby, VS Code Icons, the Web Dev Essential Pack, which is very useful. It includes like half of extensions that I have installed right here that I just showed you. It come, it, those extensions came with this extension, so that's why I have so many extensions. And then finally, we have the YAML extension, which will give us 
indentation for the .yaml files, I believe, which is really useful in Rails projects because we have .yaml files with, the, for example, the database, database.yaml, and it will give you a red line if you have something indentate, indented incorrectly. So that's pretty useful. So these are all of the extensions that I use in my VS Code editor. I'll just pick out the five most important ones. So first of all, web dev is probably the most important one because it gives you all of the other ones. The second one is the Ruby programming language. Then we have material icon theme, git lens, github copilot, CSS auto prefix, and bootstrap. They're all very, very useful. So yeah, this was just my VS code extensions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.